the historic city of Chester plays host for the first time to the Lombard RAC rally. For Bjorn Valdegard and Hannu Mikola, the rally could mark the turning point in their fight for the World Drivers' Championship. But Mikola must win to be in with a glimmer of a chance of victory with the final qualifying round coming up next month. It doesn't really affect me because I'm quite a lot uh, behind him and I, I don't think I have very good chances anymore to win it. But uh, of course if I win both of these it, it will help. So it's, it's the same tactic, you know, if I'm trying the World Championship or not, you know, I, I try to win. Go on, you, you're out to increase your lead in the World Championship on this rally. Oh, it's a... Uh... Easy tactic. It should be easy tactic for if I win this one, it's uh, I'm the champion. But uh, everybody must know that to win this one is not very easy. Why not? I mean, you have too many good uh, drivers around and uh, many good cars as well. So I should be happy if I come in a good position to finish. What's going to be the main uh, opposition to the Ford team? It has to be Mark Valley and in the Stratos. For I have driven the Stratos in the English Forest some years ago, and I know what the car is able to do. Will you be taking it fairly easy to start with? No, you know in these Mickey Mouse days, it's very easy. You all the time mistake. You nervous and you know in asphalt and you go maybe too fast all the time. Like for me last year, I spin two times in first stage, two times. So you're gonna try and do better this year? Yes, sure. Now I go slowly, slowly, piano, piano. Uh-huh, uh-huh. My stomach is already upside down, so... But usually it means a good rally. So, I haven't finished the RAC before. But if I do finish it this time, no, I don't think we can be very far from the front. It's very demanding rally because unknown roads and there can be very slippery conditions, ice and snow and all, all that makes it very difficult. And because of that, it is very interesting rally. What do you know about the first stage of the rally? I understand that uh, animals will not be on the roads. Effective crowd control at the Duckham special stage Nosley Safari Park. Safely locked up, the animals give way to the aggressive horsepower of the escort of last year's RAC winners Hannu Mikola and Arnie Hertz. At the Sellers point immediately after the Duckham stage, there is already drama. Voldegaard has been off the road and damaged his car. A disastrous start to the rally for him. That's excellent. Oh. 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 
the damper or something. Yeah, just check the damper as well. It's it? As usual, I went off on the first stage. No, it was a nasty corner with leaves and uh, we went in reasonably slow, but uh, put on uh, throttle in the middle of the corner, just spin and we jumped into the ditch. Sunday lunchtime, Sutton Park, the fourth of the 59 special stages, and Hanu Mekala is masterly in front of a 100,000 strong crowd. <laughs> But early leader is Marco Allen in the dramatic Lancia Stratos. He sets fastest time and takes a 15 second lead. However, with snow and ice forecast for the first loop, Sweden Stig Blomqvist is a potential winner in the Saab Turbo. A much matured Ari Vatanen is more than capable of challenging the more established star drivers. Twice RAC winner Roger Clark is determined to put in a good performance on this, his last four-team drive. Tony Pond is regarded by many as the best natural British driver, and he's out to prove the fact in his last drive for the Talbot team. For Pentier Ricola, the RAC rally is crucial for his British Open Rally Championship hopes. He has to finish higher than eighth to clinch the title. A Ricola's teammate, Jimmy McRae, catches and passes the stricken Saab Turbo of Ola Stromberg. Last year, the Swede rolled on this same stage. This time, he's been into some trees. Here's someone who'd like to be in the trees. <laughs> Finn Simo Lampinen is amongst a crop of drivers who are retiring after this rally. BL teammate American John Buffum is having trouble getting to grips with his TR7 V8 at the Donington Park stage. But he's not alone. Swede Bjorn Johansson also loses his sense of direction in his Opal. Whilst New Zealander Alan Carter in the Duckham's Escort half spins but maintains his lead in the Group 1 category for standard cars. How's the stage been? Uh, very muddy some of them. Too slippy. I didn't enjoy. Did you? Not really, no. no. <laughs> Getting too old for this, I guess. Too slippy and too fast. Yes, we're not on Mikola's pace by any means, but I think he's got the benefit of being quite early into the stages because they're cutting up very quickly. And we're running at car 17, which makes it very, very difficult. How's the stages been apart from that tonight? They've been okay, very slippery, very deceptive. And we've been off once. And I think other, lots of other people have been off, so. Yes, and also I'm off in a road in, uh, I don't know what states, in, I pay four minutes. What happened? You know, it's all front. In brakes, so only front. I go, but okay, I go also in very fast. This is also my mistake, not only car. I go flat out in big fight in Hanu, and after I have bad luck. Under the cover of darkness, the drivers face the stiffest of challenges. The long night through the Yorkshire, Kilda and Scottish forests. And it's here that Mikola makes his move. By the breakfast stop at Carlisle on Monday morning, he is more than three minutes up on Vartanen. Top British driver is Russell Brooks in third place. Morning, Russell. So nice you had. Uh, quite good, really. We've had one puncture in Kielder, which cost a bit of time, but 
Otherwise, no problems. The only problems being running a bit down on the road and it's all being very cut up. All, uh, all luck I had uh, earlier this year, I think I lost it all this night. But that's the game. What went wrong? What's gone wrong? Uh, we got a puncture on the one long stage before before killed it. And when we should jack it up, uh, the jack uh, broke down. And it took us a bit more than six minutes to get it going again. Incredible night ahead. Incredible? Yeah, so a lot of problems. Really? Yeah, so all long stages I had a lot of problems. Like what? First two stages, exhaust was broken directly from, from the head. And after, the distributor was broken and there was no power in the car. Oh, you know, after this accident, then I go not, not very well. I am, my feeling now very down. Do you feeling tired? Not too bad, see, I wake up when it's time to go to sleep, and I feel tired when it's time to start again. What are you going to do now, then? Yeah, we're going to try and find a couple of big girls, really. Oh, what's happened here? Um, it's uh, two separate accidents. Uh, one was uh, we hit the gate post, and uh, another one was what was it? Three. Three. <laughs> Three. Yeah, it's his side. So it's not very polite. <laughs> happened. Do you know where you're lying? Has this dropped you down? In the uh, not that, didn't, but we had a puncture and we had to change the tyre in the queue then, that dropped us. Not very good now, but still on the way to go. Into the Lake District and it's magnificent Mikola who continues to set the pace. Vartanen is driving well within himself in second place. Timo Salonen is impressive in eighth position in the Dalsen. Alain is an unhappy 13th. Whilst Voldegaard is having one of those rallies. Pond in the Talbot is fourth and determined to catch Brooks for the honour of best British driver. In the Lake District, Brooks is a minute ahead of his fellow countrymen. Roger Clark is holding off Salonen in seventh place. Whilst Auricola is obviously still not satisfied with the shape of his Chevette. BL hopes rest on Sweden's Per Eklund, who is just out of the top ten in the potent TR7 V8. After a night halt in Chester, the remaining 94 competitors set out on the final two-day Welsh leg. The Western Park stage opens proceedings on Tuesday morning. Timo Salonen has moved ahead of Roger Clark. Alain in the low-slung Lancia, untroubled by the fog, is fastest by three seconds. Pentia Ricola starts the final leg in 12th place, determined to make it into the top eight to clinch the British championship. <whistles> stage 37 out of 59, Mikola revels in the fast-flowing world stages. He has moved into a daunting five minutes lead and appears uncatchable. Bartonen in the Rothmans Escort is still second on stage times, but in Wales he's penalised an extra ten minutes for a timing infringement. This drops him down to fifth. During the world stages, Pond takes third place. But that improvement is short-lived. On an icy night, he leaves the road and retires. 
Another driver who relishes the Welsh landscape is Marco Allen. The smooth surfaces suit the Lancia, and Allen is able to make up for his early problems. Walter Royal is rather off the pace of the Fiat and starts the world section in 13th position. Rickler's attempt to climb the leaderboard is dogged by time-consuming punctures. He's had to drive more than 11 miles on six punctured tyres. But a difficult final night in Wales presents no frustrations for Hanu Mikula. By the morning at Bedis Akoid, he is eight minutes ahead of the pack. No, it was very, very slippery and icy and uh, foggy and uh, really hard conditions and uh, very tiring to drive. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't have any any problems at all. And now, what's the tactics from now to the end then? Well, we will drive uh, not flat out, but uh, still the speed that uh, I'm interested to to drive, you know. Mikola sails through the final batch of stages in North Wales to win his second successive Lombard RAC rally with consummate ease. The winning margin, an amazing 11 minutes. British honours rest with Russell Brooks, who is delighted with second place, his best ever RAC rally result. It's his last drive in a Ford Escort. Next year, he'll be driving a Talbot Sunbeam. Timo Salonen gives Datsun its best ever RAC placing with a determined drive into third. New Zealander Alan Carter wins the Group 1 category for standard cars in the Duckham's Escort, coming a creditable 19th overall out of 74 finishes. At Chester Castle on Wednesday evening, Hanu Mikola and Arnie Hertz taste the success of victory on the Lombard RAC rally. Their win marks the end of an era for Ford, who are withdrawing from rallying after this, their eighth successive RAC win with the Escort.